Okay, we are, uh, uh, we are here at Holyoke City Hall. This is the Monday, May 13th meeting of the Development and Governmental Relations Subcommittee of Holyoke City Council. I'm the chairman. To my right is Mike Sullivan. To my left is Pete Tallman. To his left is Terrence Murphy. The uh, first item on our agenda is uh, prior meeting minutes. If I can just get a motion and take them off the table. Motion to take off the minutes off the table for discussion. Motion is made and second take them off the table. On the motion uh, under discussion, hearing none, all in favor, aye. Uh, the, mo the, the minutes look good. Does anybody have any questions or comments about them? No, I just received them. I think everything looks fine with them. So I'll make a motion to uh, accept and receive the minutes. On the, on the motion made in second to accept and receive the minutes on discussion, hearing none, on the motion, all in favor, aye. aye. Uh, if I can motion number, number two, please. Take item number two up for the table for discussion. Motion, motion being a second, take number item, agenda item two off the table. Uh, on the motion, under discussion, hearing none. All in favor, aye. aye. Motion is made, in, uh, the, motion, uh, the order on the table is uh, that the Honorable City Council in accord with uh, Chapter 30B vote to accept an offer of $1,000 from Eureka Enterprises LLC to purchase and redevelop the city-owned building at 144 High Street. The property is identified uh, on the assessor's block. It's a two-story, 5,460-square-foot building. The property is owned uh, downtown business, has assessed value of $82,400. We're joined by Councillor Valentin. Welcome. Um, okay, with us, fortunately, we have uh, uh, Marcos and John from the Office of Planning and Economic Development. Uh, Marcos, take it away. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, 144 High Street, as you can see on the map to my left, your right. Um, you may remember this property. The committee had taken up uh, the, a sale for this property uh, several months ago. Uh, at that time, the proposal brought before you was uh, by the Housing Authority to do a, uh, a community center uh, with regards to Lyman Terrace. Uh, for several reasons that was, um, uh, even though the, the proposal was, was approved, the Housing Authority and their development partner, the community builders, decided not to go forward on that. Uh, so we put it out again f uh, to seek requests for proposals. Uh, in this round, uh, we got uh, one proposal again, uh, this time from uh, Eureka Enterprises. Uh, we have a representative from Eureka here, Helen Andrews, uh, you may remember Helen Andrews. She's, she's addressed the city council before as uh, a new business owner uh, coming into town. Um, her and her husband have purchased a, significant, uh, a significantly sized uh, mill, about 100,000 square feet on Winter Street, uh, with the intention of uh, starting up a, a, a cannabis-related business. And so they're expanding their, their footprint in the city and their intent to, um, to invest here. They've, they've moved their family here um, and they put in a proposal for 144 High. Um, in general, their proposal is to uh, immediately secure uh, the building. Um, you uh, may be familiar from the last time, but um, uh, the last time we considered this property, but there is uh, some structural failing in the backside of the, of the building, which is a concern um, for city officials. Uh, they intend to immediately stabilize that and by next year uh, start the rehabilitation of the building to have a residential, a residential unit on the top of the building. Um, they, see, they, they have two options for that. One is they may themselves move into that property or uh, they, they are seeing uh, very positive uh, rental, uh, uh, rental trends uh, in the area. Um, and they can create one or two uh, commercial, uh, commercial sites on the first floor as well. Uh, they estimate uh, at least a $400,000 investment um, up, to, up to half a million uh, for, that, for that project. Uh, their offer for the property is, is $1,000. Um, and of course, you can, you can ask them about, about the offer on the property. Uh, I would note that uh, one of the differences between this proposal versus the Housing Authority's proposal that was at $10,000 is this is being done without any, any type of uh, government subsidy. This is all their, their own equity um, and, and uh, private debt um, on, on the project. Those are the, uh, that's the broad framework. Uh, John, I don't know if I missed anything that you want to add to that. I think you covered it, Marco. Some, some um, councilors may remember this is um, owned by the Hamels. They had a framing shop, an art studio there for many, many years. And um, um, the city took it for a tax foreclosure several years ago. And uh, uh, 
uh, just to echo Marcos's comments, we've gone through the building several times uh, with the prospective buyer as well as others, and uh, uh, especially the rear of the building is in uh, significant uh, need of roof and masonry work to stabilize it. And I think um, some of the comments we heard was that that needs to be done ASAP. So we're, we're, we're uh, uh, pleased to work with uh, Chris and Helen. I think one of the concerns we had early on was that they're doing a major project on Winter Street and some of our concerns was will you have the capacity to do another substantial project on High Street and uh, uh, the reply was actually it's to their benefit because while well, they'll have contractors on hand doing work down there they can also have them uh, do other work while they're here on High Street so uh, uh, they're uh, renting right now in, in as, as residents and I think uh, uh, looking, uh, it's just a, a great sign for us that they're looking uh, as, as uh, for other investment opportunities and uh, it's been nice to work with them. Community members have questions? Council Murphy? I just might go to the uh, potential buyer, uh, but if I want to suspend and, and address her directly, Terry, or what would you, what's your pleasure? Uh, if we could suspend the rules, I think she's probably got the answer. You want to make the motion? I'll make a motion. We suspend the rules. Motion made and second. Suspend the rules. Allow the public to address us on this issue. On motion, under discussion, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion suspended. Um, so, if, could you just turn the microphone on? Just, just tap it. Somebody was assisting. There you go. Please. So, just as I was reading the materials, if, um, you're. You're the corporation, but you're also going to be the primary renter, if I read that correctly. Potentially, yes. Uh, right. I and, mean, we don't we don't shop. want to commit to living there. I mean, that that is our that was our main goal, um, but um, you know, if if it's a better opportunity to rent it out for income, that that's something that we're considering. But we absolutely first looked at the property to build a home on the upstairs. Our our kids go to Matter Dolorosa. It would mm -hmm. be just great for us to walk to school every day. Okay, so and you're going to potentially reside on the second floor. Is, is it yes. a coffee shop on the first floor? Is that what the plan is? And is That's there the plan. additional plans or no? I'm sorry? Is there additional plans or is it just the coffee shop? For now, it's just the coffee, coffee shop, but we're finding lots of opportunities every day. Okay, and there's room to do more than just a coffee shop? Um, the co it would be a small coffee shop. It would be like a thousand square feet. Okay. So if we wanted a big coffee shop, we could. Otherwise, we could rent the the right side of the property to someone else, to another small business. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Marcos, um, what's, what's Holyoke Housing Authority's position on, on this? Because what, 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 just remind us what would happen with, with Holyoke. So they, they put in a bid for $10,000? Yes, their 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 current position is they're they're creating a community center on site in Lyman Terrace, and they're not they're not looking for this they're not looking at this property as as an option anymore. So their their community center would be, it's on Hamden Street, right? Yes, on Hamden Street. There's one structure, um, one of the smaller structures. Uh, you know, some of the, the long structures on Lyman Terrace are kind of facing north. Uh, they run north south the smaller ones run east west so there's okay. one on the north side of hamden street that would that would come down and it's actually the structure that's in worse condition um and um they would they would build new there it would be um, for several program programmatic reasons it's better um bang for the buck in terms of cost of construction um it's better for them how the how the spacing would be um, set up at the end of the day and then it's also in the middle of the site so it's equally accessible to everyone uh, folks wouldn't have to go around up to high street or across the alleyway so it makes more sense for for them to have the community center in the middle of of Lyman Terrace so they've at this point they've they've just backed out of 144 high okay and and where do you advertise uh, usual places central register uh, we send it out to um, to several develop, developer interests, you know, people reach out to us all the time to see if there if if there are opportunities coming up. We send it to them as well. Uh, we've started sending it to a list of um, receivers because um, a lot of receivership companies also uh, will tend to do smaller size projects like these. So we have probably a list of I don't know 60, 70 receivers that work in 
Really? In our metropolitan area. Do we have that many? Uh, well, not here in Holyoke, but that they work, you know, that they're recorded. How many, how many just, just on, what would you guess or how many work in Holyoke now? And it's I, just, would, I wouldn't dare guess because I, I really don't know the number. Eight? Uh, 32? John, John is, uh, is betting less than five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We basically took it off the, off the, uh, Land court, you know, any, everyone who's an approved receiver uh, in the region. So um, casting a wide net to make sure that, that folks who would have the capacity to do something like this are, are receiving our opportunities. All right, all right back taxes, what, what, what's, what, what to do on that? There were no taxes. Um, they were written off when the foreclosure happened. Say that again. The, 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 the city did what? The, the, the city, the city Alabama. took in a tax title. Right. Uh, okay. Is the question how much was owed? Yeah. When it, for, when it was foreclosed? Yeah. Do we have that information? I, I, I didn't dig that up. I'll have to find it. Yeah. I, that, that'll get asked on Tuesday. Okay. So, um, if I could just have, you can just email it to me, John. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, and I can ask the applicant herself since she was gracious enough to come tonight. Uh, but if, if, you know, four hundred thousand dollar investment experience. You know, where where's that? I mean, d d does she have a letter? D does the LLC have a letter of credit from a bank? We did receive a financial uh, verification. Yes. What was it? Uh, I believe it was uh, four three hundred fifty thousand dollars. From where? Um, I, uh, Helen, can you help me with that one, please? The the lender. Private Capital Funding, it's a, a private lender based out of Queens, New York. It is a lender that we used to close on our 110 Winter Street property, which was a bridge loan. We paid it in full within three months. And have, have you developed a building I'm like sorry? Have you redeveloped a building like this before? No. Have you redeveloped a building like Winter Street before? No. I'm excited about your... Uh, I'm excited too. Enthusiasm, but no, okay. Um, well, we have a team of contractors that are supporting us, so. No, I didn't figure you were, you know, gonna be working on both buildings, but uh, did, you, did you and your husband have a timeline on, on this property? On 144 High, yes. That's right, um, yeah. Our hope is to begin working with designers and architects this year to, well, the first commitment that we've made is to secure the building immediately upon closing. Um, because it's going to fall down. Mm. Uh, you can't tell from the front of the building, but from the back you can see that it's completely um, destroyed. Um, following, following that, we are working with a team of architects on Winter Street that are going to help us with this project, and we'd like to begin restoration in 2020. So you're gonna secure it and then insure it, I would imagine? Yes. Do, do that, yeah, okay. Um, okay, uh, Marcos, did, did you discuss with the applicant how sometimes we do re, uh, um, revert clauses? Yes, that is, that is standard in our request for proposals. Uh, they're well aware of it. Uh, we've talked about the timing. Um, and so our reverter clause as is standard is a, is a two-year window to begin construction. Uh, and so that's why they've they prioritized because of the physical condition of the building, securing it before the winter. Uh, making sure that that backside is stabilized, and then next year uh, completing the the renovation. And so for the folks at home, the reverter clause, right? Because sometimes this is a question that we get, so I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll preempt the question. Uh, the reverter clause is something that we put on property so that uh, folks aren't just speculating with land. That we wanna we wanna see movement uh, when land is purchased. Viewers of this committee are very well versed in reverter clauses. I'm, I'm, that's the feedback I get. They're uh, all, all 150 of them, but uh, but they're, they all know about reverter clauses. Um, okay, and it's it's really just to ensure that a, a property once sold doesn't say to stay on somebody's balance sheet for 17 years and then nothing happens and we're we're at the exact same place where we were. Uh, 17 years ago, which is a, just a, a, a dilapidated building that's 17 years worse. Um, so, I mean, I have. Uh, did, did you gentlemen? Did you gentlemen contact this um, 
financing company? Or did you just did you just get you got the letter and you didn't contact them? No. This is the same finance company that for they're on the deed for Andrew Winter, right? Um, I haven't compared the two, but uh, thought they were. that's what's been represented. Right. And I mean, I'm not opposed to this, but I just would think that you know, a private capital group out of uh, New York, which I'm, I'm sure they're all legitimate and fine, but it, <clears throat> it would be nice just to have a, you know, just to verify the letter. I mean, I, I, I'm not doubting anybody. I'm just you, just so we can cover all our bases too, um, as well. And not, I mean, again, I, I don't. I have my I have strong feelings about getting everything off of off of our balance sheet and moving it off to the private. I have, I've been a strong proponent of this since the day I chaired this committee, um, uh, which is now going on uh, six and a half years. So um, I, I would say though that you know, this is somewhat unusual for uh, for this department to come in with a, um, a a project like this with a, a developer with you know just shall we say limited experience. And, um, and, and uh, you know, I, I know that the building's not in great shape, is, but it's still in an important location in the city, and we will have to take it very seriously, as to, especially to a, to a butters. Um, so I just want to, I just want, I just want, want to make sure we have as much background as we possibly could have. Okay, thank you so much, Helen. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, all right, uh, Council Tallman. Yeah, just briefly, um, the other bid you said was the Housing Authority. Was there any other? Bids or any other people to talk to about this property, this, other than Eureka? We we got no other proposals. Um, some other folks have walked through the property, and it's been pretty uniform. The feedback that the concern is the amount of investment that you're going to need to structurally secure the building, even before actually fixing it up for occupancy. So yeah. it's been it's been daunting for folks. <laughs> That's why we haven't gotten that many proposals. Okay. Yeah. And I, I have the same concerns as our, our chairman, um, but I feel that, you know, this property downtown Holyoke is an important property. And the longer we wait um, to try to take care of it and renovate it, it's just going to get worse and worse. And um, I know it's a small amount, $1,000, but the investment is, is big and taking a property in the city that, um, and they're already working on a property down on Winter Street, that's actually going to bring in tax revenue for the city and clean up a a dilapidated building, I think, is uh, is very uh, important, um, especially downtown. So I um, I really want to thank Chris and Helen about uh, uh, Andrews uh, of putting the investment in Holyoke and and hopefully uh, with the contractors a good team that they can do a good job uh, on this building and on Winter Street. And uh, I'm very much uh, in favor of this project. Okay, Council Thomas, that come here, Council Valentin. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be voting in support of this. I think that opportunities we have to uh, not only put properties back on our tax rolls, but also address the serious issue of blight that we have uh, throughout the city are opportunities that we obviously seriously need to look at. Um, I don't know if it's a common practice that um, organizations that are financing projects are contacted by uh, us, but I mean, if that's something that needs to happen, I, I'm not opposed to that. I wouldn't want that to uh, impede, sorry, impede with um, the process. And obviously, uh, this is not going to come up until our next meeting, um, which, if I'm doing my math correctly, is not next Tuesday, but the one after. So there is some leeway time in there. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to. Uh, the progress on this, I think that the fact that uh, this company is is working on an, another project as well is um, is something that's encouraging, and I um, wish you the best of luck uh, with the project, and I look forward to coming to the ribbon cutting. Thank you. Yeah, let me just help the council with the math. Yeah, the next full city council meeting is a week from uh, week from tomorrow. Um, the um, the um, yeah, when I when I ask when I ask a question, it's not to, not to impede; it's to just to do due diligence, and I, I think they're reasonable questions. I, I don't think I'm singling out anybody, and I hope the applicant doesn't feel that way. I don't think anything was asked unreasonably. Um, so on that, um, on that, I'll I'll get a motion, please. Motion that we approve the, the sale. I'm a second. So motion made and second, approve the sale. And discussion, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So what we've done, uh, Helen, is we've uh, voted to recommend it 
to the full city council. The full city council will meet a week from tomorrow at seven o'clock. You may or may not attend. It's really at your at your pleasure. We meet at seven o'clock, and we uh, we go from there. Okay, so let me just record that vote. Okay, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to step back from the meeting. The meeting is now going to be chaired by Councillor uh, Mike Sullivan. Okay. Okay, thank you. We got a motion to take up item three. So moved. Okay, so item three uh, introduced by myself that the Honorable City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30B and the Hoyoke Procurement Ordinance, vote to accept an offer from Ja Jan LLC to purchase and redevelop the city owned land located at 689 Main Street for $40,000. The property is identified in the Hoyoke Assessor's records as map 055, block 00, parcel 009, and described as a vacant lot, approximately 20,343 square feet, 0.47 acres in size. The property is zoned general industry, has an assessed value of 24,600. Okay, so uh, go ahead, Marcos. Uh, sure. Uh, Thank you, uh, Councillor, uh, for giving us the opportunity to present on, on this sale as well. It seems like tonight is the is the night of repeats. Uh, this one, uh, a couple of years ago, was also put forward before the City Council for approval of sale, which, which it was, it was approved. Uh, at that time, it was by their prior owner of the transfer facility, so prior to Casella, I, I, I forget the, uh, the company name. Uh, but they had an intent to uh, expand not only across the street, um, across Main Street, uh, to have a repair facility, but then they they desired this this property that's highlighted in blue on the screen to your right or left uh, for essentially for parking. Um, that's uh, there it wasn't a, a more active use than that. Uh, going back a little bit further, 689 Main Street is also known as the former Automania site. There was uh, automobile repair there uh, before it was delinquent on taxes and it was foreclosed on. The city inherited a brownfield site. Uh, there were uh, hydrocarbons and other chemicals in the ground. Um, we, we pursued a $200,000 EPA grant several years ago and uh, an $85,000 mass development grant. So we, we got it cleaned uh, without using city taxpayer dollars. Um, I, from my memory, slightly under budget. <laughs> um, so it, it's a former brownfield site. We've, we've removed all the, all the contaminants and, and have uh, provided the, the proper documentation to DEP to close it out. Um, since the approval of the sale to the to the uh, transfer station in, it, in its prior ownership, um, it's been evident that the new ownership has no intent to use it. Uh, in fact, they modified their plans. They they didn't even um, move forward with their uh, plans to build an auto repair facility across from Main Street. So we put it back out, uh, similar to what we did with 144 High Street in the prior discussion. We put this property out to uh, for request for proposals. Um, in this iteration, uh, we got we got two proposals. Uh, one was for a uh, for a, a parking facility, uh, essentially a retail parking facility that would that would serve businesses in the area, particularly someone trying to be entrepreneurial around uh, potential need for parking for uh, some of the cannabis uh, industries in the uh, Springdale Park area. Uh, this one that we are putting before the city council is uh, the proposal is to aggregate it. It's from the abutter uh, of, of this property. Um, they, they recently closed on the purchase of uh, the former gas station that I, I believe was, was closed, at least temporarily. Uh, it's, it's currently open, but the intent is to uh, take down um, a significant portion of the structures, increase the amount of pumps uh, that are there, um, and uh, build a new um, a new building uh, in the back that would have a, a retail component, uh, particularly a, or, or potentially uh, a, a restaurant component, uh, as well as adding diesel fuel. Uh, so all of this kind of requires that that other parcel uh, to be able to complete the corner. 
uh, and and have the turning radii for the for the trucks and, and, and having diesel also having that that uh, approximately four to five thousand square foot um, uh, building uh, actually four four to six thousand square feet uh, building so um, the design is not finalized it's kind of conceptual at this point so to recap a butter puts in a proposal for the land to consolidate ownership on the site um, expand the the automobile use there the the gas station uh, with additional retail component uh, and potential restaurant uh, the the proponent uh, has significant experience in Holyoke in in gas stations um, uh, he has been involved in managing the the race mart on Main Street uh, the one on South Street and the shell station on Northampton Street including the recent uh, renovations there so that is, uh, the, the proposal for the property is $40,000. So you mentioned you had one other proposal as well? Correct. And how, how much was that one for? Is that uh, 45,000? 45,000. All right, and we took the lesser number because? Uh, the, the parking in and of itself would have not have provided uh, additional economic value to the city. It would have just been a, a, a paved over lot uh, with controlled access. Uh, we didn't feel like there was a need for additional parking on that corner. Uh, the two cannabis businesses uh, in, that, in that vicinity that it hypothetically would serve has, have gone through a very rigorous special permit process that has gone through staff review and also city council review and approval where they've proved that they have more, more than adequate parking. Uh, so we felt that it was, while well intended, um, it was... Um, it, it, wouldn't, it wasn't going to meet a need and it wasn't going to create additional value. So the amount of taxes that the city will gain in the first year alone from an expanded gas station is going to outstrip those $5,000 many times over. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm any questions from the rest of the committee? Councilor yeah. Talman? Yeah. Uh, Marco said, if you go back to the other side, um, the, the square in the back there next to the blue near the street, is that also owned by them right now? Yes, it is. That whole, okay, so that's the back yep. lot part of the gas where the yep, pumps exactly. are. Yep. And it, you always talk about some kind of maybe commercial retail? Correct. With the restaurant too? Is that in the back or, or is that yes, going to be all part have, of? Yeah. yeah, so it would be kind of similar to the concept of the Race Mart on Main Street where you have gas pumps on the front and then you have a building on the back that has a, a retail component. Okay, and that brown spot way in the back corner, that small square, is that something right now? No. No building. Or I think anything. that's a it's that's a, an abutting property. That's not that's not part of the gas station. Right. Okay. So the the long building, I th I think that says parcel. What does that say? Parcel sixteen. Uh, Can't read it. See that. I'll just stand up. Because <laughs> there is a you interstate plumbing or something down there. Is it next door to it? Is that that long building? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> These two are the gas station. Okay. Okay. This is not the gas station. That's not okay. That's. I'll, Okay. So this will give them a complete sort of area where they can reset their trucks and uh, to turn in there. Um, Conceptual plan. Okay. Now the jobs, is that eventually after things get built up, the, the 15 jobs possibly, I mean, within that period of time? That's our understanding. Not right away, I mean, but as, right. as things get built up. And then the time frame again for the start and finish or? immediately start the uh, even now um, uh, I saw some pictures today of some improvements being made there uh, for the short term uh, to clean the site up and uh, uh, immediately starting the permitting process after um, after closing and a 12 to 18 month period for construction okay yeah because I, I drove by to today to check it out and then I recall that building with the prior building and, and with the, um, the, the refuse facility we're gonna buy that right to was it, re was it repair shop or something they wanted to work in there or something? Well, the repair time? shop would have happened just south of Berkshire Street. So if you, okay. if you imagine the other that, side. that conceptual plan on the left side, that's where Berkshire Street is. So across there, that's where they would have had the repair facility. The, the property they were buying from the city would have just been a, a parking. parking lot. Right. That's what they had planned, right? Right. And with the new owner, Casala decided not to. Correct. They, have, yeah. they, they did not pursue those plans. Okay. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a great fit for that area, especially making that whole lot there complete, you know. Um, and with the renovating, and I, I'm familiar with 
a racing mart on Main Street and on uh, South Street, especially the one in Northampton Street, which I often see. And then I uh, used to go up there often. Um, they really did a good job with that, um, the former, uh, you know, gas station that was up there, uh, Crabtree. So um, I really have a lot of confidence in, in the work they can do. And, and with this area uh, downtown, um, I think it's important to, to really complete that that whole square there and, and have it, uh, you know, looking really good yeah. um, and, and bring in tax dollars for the community. So just if I could add, I, I was remiss not to introduce Mr. Um, uh, Abbasiones, who's here. Abe is here if there's any questions. But uh, one of the things we heard in the past, because he's a recent new owner of this particular gas station, and that has always been challenged uh, by the location and other folks who have approached us to redevelop it said it would only work with this adjacent parcel so uh it's it's an um and especially when it's being described as a similar uh renovation as what was done at the corner of cabin in maine some uh of you may recall the condition of that location for a right. long time and and it's turned into a nice amenity for that section uh that 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 intersection so. oh yeah that's, that's very busy down and i'm sure this will with it and with the traffic down there the truck traffic even i think uh with the big plus of having diesel there um is, is is vital for that area um, and so I'm, i i really uh, commend the uh the uh, owner and uh, hopefully they can uh, do a great project wish them well and, and to continue to uh you know grace our city with with projects and and to really clean up some of the areas of the city that really need the the sprucing up so i want to thank them yeah. councilor murphy yeah i'm pretty much in favor of this as well and uh, a couple of things just driving by there pretty much every day uh, security in the gas station as it is now has been one of the major issues so I strongly encourage the fact that there's going to be other businesses there which would provide some stability from from the criminal level and I, I don't know if there's two or three break-ins that have or armed robberies that have taken place there over the years so I think having retail and other commercial and then having hours that kind of relate to that certainly it would, would provide uh, better security in the area. One concern I do have, and it is parking, uh, and uh, making sure that uh, uh, there's ample parking for you know putting a restaurant in there and other shops, plus the diesel, diesel trucks coming in and everything else. So that is a concern. And the other concern, and, and it was expressed prior to the meeting, was the uh, ability for cars going north on Main Street to be able to get into the, uh, to the facility uh, off of Main Street. And I don't know if we need to do something off of Berkshire Street to make that a more obvious choice uh, so that we don't end up with so many cars trying to cross over illegally in order to get there. And, I, and I've seen that happen even with just the gas station. So uh, if we get the more traffic we got, that would be a concern. But I'm, I mean, it definitely is something I was happy to see it. I like the idea of the restaurant. I like the idea of, of uh, some retail shops. Uh, and I definitely think the idea of improving the gas station and making it more customer friendly, if you will, uh, will play a big role. But so I do appreciate the, the investment and uh, look forward to having you. Okay. Marcos. Well, to the to the traffic point, uh, that's one of the things that the that the owner and proponent has presented to us is exactly that interest in getting northbound traffic to be able to take a, a left turn into the site. Uh, clearly, would be of, of giant value to to that development. There is a very long traffic island that impedes that. Um, and so it's probably been there for a long time and, and it, it's hard to ascertain why exactly it's that long, but we've, we've already, um, uh, discussed at, at length with a proponent that this would likely, um, require some sort of site plan review, particularly because of the traffic issues. It is a, a high volume set of intersections there off of 391. And so clearly we would want to be able to facilitate the movement as best as possible. We want to make sure that doesn't interfere with, with the, um, with the traffic because that's 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 very uh, a very busy area so making sure that it all works is, is definitely going to be a priority once um if and when this is uh, this is approved by the council uh, do we have any questions from any other councilors present good okay entertain a motion okay make a motion to uh, approve the uh, accept the uh, offer from uh john john for forty thousand dollars for 689 main street second okay all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None? Okay.
Thank you. Goes unanimous. Uh, as uh, you said, that'll come up at the uh, council meeting on Tuesday, and we'll forward our recommendation. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You want to grab Dave? Tell him you can have his glasses back. I'll take item fives because um, it's going to be a quick one while we wait for Dave. You won't. Yeah, so you just do one. Okay, right that's fine. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, Councilor Sullivan, thank you so much for, uh, for, for doing a great job. I really appreciate that. Um, okay. Second. All right. Uh, motion's been made and seconded to take agenda item four off the table on the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, let's see. Okay, this, is, this is, was tabled from uh, April 8th. Uh, Terry Murphy filed this. Um, the, the committee looked to meet with uh, uh, Office of Planning and Economic Development, uh, Director of uh, One Holyoke. Uh, gentlemen, just come on in as I hear you. Uh, so it's Mike, uh, Mike Moriarty, uh, former school committee person, Director of uh, One Holyoke is here. Mike, welcome. Uh, Matt Mainville, the um, uh, Executive Director of of HHA is here. Stephen Huntley, the executive director of VOC, is here. And I know there's a rep from Nueva. 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 Okay, she's, yeah, if you, yeah, if you just, just come on in. Um, and then. I, let Sarah come in too. It's, it's, it was, yeah, Sarah? Yeah, you, yeah, come on in. Yeah, come on. Um, so at this meeting, the following areas should be discussed. Um, there's you know, several areas in uh, Churchill section of, uh, of Holyoke um, to be discussed. Uh, goal is to move the process to a recommended action, help create a timeline for what can and should be done and by which agencies. Uh, we're also joined at one point by Councilor Leahy, who was here, and Councilor Vacan is here. And okay, so we have, uh, uh, we have a pretty good group, Matt. You can just get to share a microphone, okay? Um, um, yeah, if you would ju just you just share a microphone, and if you would, um, so I I think I know everybody, but we're we're just gonna we're just gonna make sure for the records. So we'll just start over here. If you just if you just give just give me your name and, and the agency, just so I can have it clear, okay? Please. I'm Sarah Myers and Blair. I'm the Director of Development at the Holyoke Housing Authority. Uh, Matthew Mainville, Executive Director, Holyoke Housing Authority. Mike? Okay. I'm Mike Moriarty, I'm the Executive Director of One Holyoke Community Development Corporation. I'm Kayla Rodriguez, Operations Manager at Nueva Esperanza. Steve Huntley, Executive Director of VOC. Okay, great, okay. Well, um, we had a really good discussion last time. I, I think we went through a lot of the projects. Uh, Councilor Murphy, uh, you want you want to start us off? Right? Sure. Are we start uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, yes, we did have a, a good presentation from Mark Wilson and, and John uh, at our last meeting, but I wanted to make sure that all of the various agencies that are involved in housing and redeveloping in, in Holyoke and, and certainly in, uh, in the Churchill section, and I was basing this on what my conversation with a variety of people and who had had interest in doing certain things, who had done certain projects. So, I mean, obviously this is part of my ward. One of the thoughts, I, I, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, sometimes I know in South Holyoke, the housing authority is going to be doing the re a revitalization. I'm coming up there. I'm trying to give you a name there. Of, of housing in, in South Holyoke, but I, I'm not sure it's always needs to be one agency, and I know that there are properties, and I was happy to hear Matt indicated to me that they had just purchased, I don't know if I make a bad announcement, you just tell me to shut up, but they just purchased 
uh, property on uh, Jackson and Chestnut, which we had talked about and which is actually part of this discussion. And they finally purchased it and they've already, I know he's had ideas as to what he wants to do with it. I've talked to uh, uh, Mike Moriarty about the potential, uh, um, especially at Jackson and, and Maple where they've had other, pro other projects that they've done. I know Valley Opportunity and Nueva have, have uh, properties that they own and operate there. So I just wanted to get all the players in, involved and obviously planning and development since a lot of this is gonna end up going through uh, planning and development to get to you. But I want, I want to see if we can move the process to come up with a plan as, as good, much as we can. And it may be broken down by agency and by neighborhood, but I would like to get to the position where you know, in seven months when I'm a retiree, I'm looking at saying, hey, these are plans that have begun to be implemented or at least put together. And now we've got agencies that are accepting responsibility and they're going to go and do this and this agency is going to go do that. And so we're not sitting, you know, I've been around a long time and I don't want to keep seeing vacant lots and boarded up buildings be the norm. Uh, in, in some of these older neighborhoods. And, and I, I'm appreciative that it's not an easy thing to, to avoid, but you know, I, I think I've got the key players here to start working on it and to start cooperating and, and not necessarily, if you will, like this is gonna be my wing and that's gonna be your wing and don't get into my wing as much as you're probably better qualified to do this part, but we've got an edge to do this part, so let's work together and let's coordinate it citywide. So that's my goal, and I appreciate you all coming. Uh, that's my spiel. So, well, uh, how would you like to approach it? Do you want to have? Do you want to ask some questions, Council Murphy? Do you want to? I mean, we think we heard from Marcos and John last time in pretty great detail. Um, would you Would you like to hear from the? You know, we just go around the room, and yeah. would, would that be would that yeah, be preferable? That be, or that would be fine. Okay. Um, it, you know, you want to start over here with uh, with Sarah and, and Matt, and and then uh, and then, sure. and then uh, so um, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come down and, and provide a little bit of an update as it relates to some of the vacant parcels surrounding our Fall City Towers, which is at uh, 475 Maple Street. Uh, I think the two of interest that had been brought to your attention before that we have a, a, def a definitive and a very current impact on would be 484 and 480 Chestnut Street. Uh, these were privately owned properties that the Housing Authority negotiated with and just recently purchased as uh, just as recently as last week. We just got the paperwork this week. Uh, we have already engaged an engineering firm uh, to do environmental survey of that particular property. I don't know if you guys recall, but this was a four-story uh, walk-up that burned so many moons ago. The Housing Authority has had an uh, our eye on that particular property for, actually, if you can believe it, our first piece of paperwork goes back 20 years. Uh, so we've been working a long time diligently, and this goes to Councilor Murphy's question about trying to move this along as quickly as we can. Uh, we anticipate probably doing some additional parking there with two uh, home ownership units that will face the park on, uh, that's uh, Jackson Street. Uh, we hope to uh, put together a, an application for CPA funds. So there's an early pitch. <laughs> yeah, Matt, just look, John, is, do we have the right map up for, for that one? There it is. Thank you. So this, uh, actually, if you, you can see 001 is our property, Falsetti Tower. We own 004 currently, and that's access parking for the elderly high rise. Uh, we anticipate probably p using parking on 003. Uh, we'll be going for an A&R from this from the planning board to uh, bifurcate 002, uh, and we plan on doing a couple housing units there. We probably are going to be working with, I don't, we've had some initial conversations at least with Habitat for Humanity about the possibility of using one of those parcels for some of their development there. Uh, there's nothing concrete to that end, but we've, we've partnered successfully with Habitat and they're a great organization, so we're, we're looking to possibly work with them as well. Uh, we do have Ty and Bond, like I said, working on a historic survey of uh, releases of any contaminants and working on a scope of next steps as it relates to subsurface uh, examination of the property. We're not quite sure if there's oil tanks there. Uh, we asked the fire department, we're unable to discern whether or not oil tanks had been on the site and whether or not they'd been taken off, so we still have that kind of work to do. But we plan on moving expeditiously 
uh, with the planning and the design and hopefully be prepared, like I said, for next year and uh, a CPA application and, and working with Habitat. They it, said they could get in the queue for 2024. Yeah, so Matt, so we had a... Uh, I think I, it just a, I, I thought it was a, a really interesting idea at the finance committee last week. I, I you know, obviously I respect Marcos tremendously, but um, on, on, on that, but so CPA has got four, four little areas where you can you can put in uh, uh, funding w one of them certainly is uh, creating additional housing um, and so that that would that would kind of fit but I what I thought was creative about it was if um, it wasn't really the number of units it was you know there's eight units being created but it was the fact that they could probably leverage additional additional funds as well with with the CPA so I thought that was kind of a, a unique way to uh, to um, uh, to do that, and that's that's why I that was that was one of the main reasons why I, I got behind it. You know, Council Sullivan also mentioned the. Um, oh, I'm really grateful that Dennis is here too because Dennis did, did a really great job of covering that meeting and uh, just just got I think the the just the heart of it out there and I think that's just vital. Um, so we're lucky to have him. Uh, frankly, uh, very lucky to have him, and I appreciate Dennis's coverage of subcommittee meetings as I always do, um, and that's off the record, Dennis. And, and, uh, and uh, it's too late now, right? Um, but 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 to have, to, I think what Mike what, what he picked up on what Mike noted is that you know to demolish it is going to put him in is just as much money, right? So and without building, I mean, but here you've got empty lots, right? So um, I mean, um, just visually speaking, you can see that the foundation walls are still in where the building was so there'll be some subsurface removal we'll have to do but i agree and we do plan on uh, leveraging the cpa funds so it's not it won't be a sole source request from cpa it'll be a matter of using some housing authority dollars and hopefully like i said partnering with habitat with some sweat equity and uh i mean we haven't fully fleshed out what it's going to look like i think uh, falsetti tower has kind of become a regional training area for some of our our, our brother agencies out there uh, so parking does become problematic. So I think that there's an opportunity to hopefully meet both of those demands so that we're not taking up all this, the uh, parking when we're talking about visiting nurses and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, that's good. Sarah, did you want to add anything? He's got that covered? Okay. Ms. Moriarty. So um, I spoke with uh, Councillor Murphy uh, early on in the year and uh, did a survey of the immediate area. But I, I think there, there's two things about our constraints that I should share with you. Uh, we have a presence in Churchill, and, and I think of this as primarily a Churchill kind of project. Um, we own about 48 units of housing, uh, mostly along the uh, Sergeant Street corridor uh, between Maple and um, uh, Elm Street. And uh, those are rental apartments. The biggest impact we've had on the footprint there has been the home ownership we've done over many years. Most of those duplexes that you will see uh, starting from about Hampshire Street and going on to about the entrance of 391 that would have a brick facade uh, was work that we did about 25 years ago um, along that entire area. Um, and more recently on, um, Chestnut Street itself, uh, in 2011, we completed a duplex at the corner of Hampshire and next door to it, uh, we completed uh, another duplex in 2013. In fact, that was the first um, home ownership project that we had undertaken when I came on as executive director. Uh, but I will say, one of the challenges in trying to sell new home ownership in this neighborhood is that the public safety issues are not a perception, they are extremely real. Uh, they're particularly real along that Sergeant Street area. And so just as, and I mean literally days within when we dropped a duplex on that block on Chestnut Street, there was a double murder at the park around the corner. Um, once we bring the duplex in, it actually, things happen pretty quickly. Um, and so we put it on the market at just a time when A, the market from the 2008 crash had not really turned around yet. But B, all of a sudden, we were selling a brand new house in perhaps the least desirable block in the city or close to it. And in the end, because we have a nine month window under HUD regulations to sell the houses we build because of the um, 
subsidy that we received. We could not make it in that nine months. Every single potential buyer we had was unable to fulfill a mortgage uh, because they were just at the absolute bottom of that group that we could vet that could possibly make it work. And one way or another, none of them were able to make it work and the nine months was gone. So our company's holding those that duplex as a rental uh, and has for about five years, which we hate to do. Uh, and the other thing we hate to do even more is displace a family once they have a home in one of our properties. So we'll put it back on the market and we will have the time passed and the opportunity to do so when um, we next have a vacancy there. But the first tenants who came in are still there and they're very, they're very happy in their homes. They're, they're, they've been doing fine there. Um, but I think you can't look at trying to address this neighborhood with just building new structures in isolation of the very serious public safety issues that exist there. Um, but that doesn't mean you're frozen in place and that you can do nothing. Of course, home ownership is the thing we love to do best. We believe that has the most powerful impact on stabilizing a neighborhood. We believe that it is better in some ways than rental in that when you're doing affordable housing, the folks who are paying rent to us gain no assets over the years that they live in our properties. The folks who are in the homes we've built are building equity. And that asset building is an incredibly meaningful thing for the families who have been there for 10 or 15 years. We hate to pass those opportunities up when we can get them. Um, so, you know, looking sort of block by block through the Churchill neighborhood, a couple of things that jump out are that this neighborhood could probably gain by more density and less vacancy. So multifamilies and building more apartments is not a bad move for this neighborhood at all, as long as you have experienced, knowledgeable uh, property managers who are vetting their tenants coming in properly, who are managing their properties in the correct way. Uh, you know, I will tell you, the housing authority is, I believe, the largest uh, landlord in town. I think we're about number four. Uh, Valley Opportunity Council has some units. We as nonprofit entities um, have particular missions to meet and I think we do a very good job. Uh, Nueva as well uh, has a long history. Uh, now many of those um, partnered with several other organizations. Um, when you find a destination for these individual lots, the only thing I can stress to you is look to us. Look to the folks this community knows uh, look very much at folks with a long track record of doing it the right way because that's one of the keys to your public safety issues. Changing the vacancy, changing the perception and the reality of dangers, uh, I think begins with getting rid of those empty parcels. Now, there's another area where we are, the other thing is we don't own a lot that we could build on right now among these lots. And because of the lack of um, subsidy that's been available during this decade, uh, we have not actively sought large numbers of vacant properties. Uh, we bought about 10 in the last couple of years. If I can find the right block of money, we will place housing on all 10 of those, ideally home ownership housing, uh, but they're mostly not in the Churchill neighborhood. They stretch everywhere from Suffolk Street up near the old Hobart Funeral Home down into the flats on Northeast Street. Uh, and we can do scattered site like that, no problem. If you wanted to do this as a targeted home ownership area, the first task, I think, is compiling the properties either through a redevelopment authority or through a housing authority. They both have purchasing capacity. They both have the ability to turn things um, around uh, with, with some statutory authorities that a private nonprofit like ourselves simply doesn't have, um, and in my opinion, shouldn't have either. Uh, but once they're compiled, we're experienced developers, and uh, we would happily come in and deliver the way we did along that corridor on Main Street every day of the week. Um, we do own a lot of properties a little further up. It's, I'm not even sure if anyone, everyone would agree it's still Churchill once you get to Walnut Street. I think we might be in Ward 4 at that point. Um, but we do own that stretch uh, where we had delivered a house last year where work will be beginning very shortly. Uh, we own another lot behind it. Uh, we uh, are named as a potential partner in a CPA application regarding the armory. So that's an area where we've got some presence and we've got a real vested interest. 
And that's an area where I think mixed use would be a very powerful outcome. Uh, you have a nice stable row of housing on the Pine Street side. On the Walnut Street side, you have a 56-unit apartment, I believe, that's owned by the Housing Authority uh, on one side and a ton of vacancy on the opposite side. Uh, and I think everyone would gain either with home ownership or with multifamily in that area. Uh, the other area that I think is manifestly in need of a lot of love is down in the commercial Newton Street area, uh, particularly starting at Franklin Street and then getting over uh, really as far as Cabot, if, if not further. Um, that is probably one of the most vacant looking areas of the city. Uh, it's got an interesting mix of multifamily housing. It's got those uh, row houses on Newton Street, uh, but everything uh, and I, with the one exception of a nice property that I think the Valley Opportunity Council turned around not too long ago, um, everything is in need of a ton of help. And it is simply beyond the city's resources to pick both the Upper Churchill, Sargent Street, Franklin Corridor, and that more commercial, uh, commercial street between Commercial and High Street Corridor. Uh, you know, it, it's like my suggestion you pick your mark, you pick your outcome, and work towards it in one or the other. You, you really, there's not enough bandwidth to do both, um, is, is, is the suggestion I would make there. I actually don't see us focusing a great deal on this neighborhood unless invited in with resources to do a lot of duplex housing. We would do it relatively efficiently. We would use the long experience we have. Uh, we would deliver it well, but, um, I think it is for other agencies to compile the properties first. And by the way, uh, Habitat for Humanity, another great partner. Uh, the one difference I would stress is Habitat's got one kind of model for single family homes. It's very effective. We strongly advocate for duplexes. And the reason for that is by definition, we are selling these homes to affordable home ownership, that is people living paycheck to paycheck. That duplex has saved our purchasers time and time again if something happens to that paycheck. That's the answer. It buys people time. So we, we very strongly believe in that. Habitat, of course, has a longstanding relationship as the lender to their buyers. So they also have a model to save an affordable homeowner if something happens to that paycheck. Having a model, that's the thing that matters. Just turning it over and wishing them the best of luck with a warm handshake, that's a terrible model. You don't want to be doing that. Um, so those are sort of, in a broad sense, uh, what's out there and what we can do. Um, you know, our presence is already owned and built in the neighborhood, and we would be most interested in coming in and assisting if it was part of a broader, comprehensive home ownership plan. Thanks, Mike. Can I just make one sure. comment to that? Yep. Go ahead. So a couple, a couple, first of all, I definitely agree with the safety security issues, and I mean, that is uh, something I hear pretty frequently. Uh, that people are concerned that they're going through the neighborhoods and you know I'm going to try to get in and out of here as quickly as I can why would you why would you invest there so obviously we need to take care of that and we need to do a better job and, and the other part I really want to appreciate the comments you make about wanting to get in only if there's a firm plan I mean that's the kind, that's why I wanted to get you all together because I and I do think someone obviously has to be the coordinator but then I think we got to have the players that can all right they're the coach you're, you're the cleanup hitter, all right? She's leading off because she's going to score some runs and he's going to drive her in and you're hoping to hit a game-winning homer. But that's a, that's a base. Well, well you, you're, you're, you're going to pitch the sale. You're pitching. You're the closer. <laughs> but, but, I do, but I do appreciate that thought. And I think that's exactly why I want, and I'm, I, I appreciate all the thoughts that have come out so far and I want to hear the rest. But again, we got to make it a secure area. But also vacant lots and boarded up buildings do not enhance the image of security. And as long as they're there, that image from people driving by who don't know anything about Hoyoke, their image is, I don't want to stop there. And that's an image we need to change. Tell Salman. I just want to throw something in there Jed, after that statement, Mike. And I, I totally agree about the part about uh, you know filling these vacant lots. You know, The more people you got, the more it looks inviting. And I didn't realize that the part about, you know, you had to rent the building because you only had nine months to sell it. And people come in and they can't make the, the you know, the, the payment, uh, then you're stuck, you know, and you got to rent it. Um, 
But I, I think, um, you know, the more you do that, the more you fit buildings and apartments in these lots, you know, even though it's difficult. You know, you stated public safety. I think that's a huge, huge thing, you know, especially that area. The more people you get there, the more people you get walking around, the safer people are going to feel. You know, it's almost like, you know, stand up for our neighborhoods. You know, these people, you see this in Springfield and Holyoke. Let's walk the streets. This is our neighborhood. Let's take over, you know. You can't let, you know, the, the deterrence, you know, say, hey, you know, we're in charge here. You can't let the, the, the hoodlums or whoever, the bad people saying we're, we're in charge of this neighborhood. You've got to have people come in and, and, you know, take these lots, fill them up, you know, fill them with people, you know. Can, can I add to, to have a deeper understanding of the importance of turning around vacancy and some of the great work that is done in places outside of Holyoke and even outside of our region, there's an organization called the Center for Community Progress. And I want to point out that Holyoke has wisely invested in sending city employees from the city solicitor's office, the building department, and codes and inspections to attend their conferences where you really can learn deeply about a lot of ideas that just won't circulate in town very easily. Um, you know, so there are a lot of people all over the country thinking deeply about exactly these type of issues and finding solutions. And if you weren't aware, you should know, Holyoke's been engaged with what I think is the best organization nationally dealing with this, and it's really uh, upped our game and given us some uh, strong outcomes. I, and I hope you uh, will all, as a council, continue to support that sort of investment in professional development for our city staff. Thank you. Hey, Kayla, did you want to? Well, I'm going to have Steve talk since we kind of fall under VLC, so. All I'm saying, um, oh, did I turn this off? Sorry. Um, but Nueva Esperanza is definitely in, in this game with whatever we can help with, but Steve will take it for now. So Nueva supports uh, the VOCES property, which up on that map is number five, and it's also across the street behind the, the picture. Um, VOCES has a strong tenant association, and Nueva is a real partner for us in order to communicate and, and talk to the tenants association to find out what's really going on uh, with them. Um, so that property right there is actually owned by the Tenants Association. It isn't owned by VOC, it isn't owned by any of the VOCs, subsidies, the Tenant Association actually owns it. We surveyed them last fall. The tenants said they would like to see that turned into a parking lot, which I was trying to push park, I was trying to push all these other creative scenarios. Um, as you might know, we have an early ed center diagonally across the street, so we could consider investing in a park there that could be used by our early ed classes during the day and the residents' nights, weekends, any other time. Really, all we use it is the morning, too, quite frankly. They nap in the afternoon until... But in any event, um, they wanted to look at parking. So hearing from, from Mr. Mainville across the way that they're expanding parking, we have to talk and see if there's a way that we could uh, cooperate on that because the last thing I would want to do is build a parking lot there. There's enough parking in every direction. It's just restricted. This is owned by the Catholics. This is owned by somebody else. This is owned by someone else. None of them are ever full. So it's ridiculous to put parking there when we can find a better use, um, in my opinion. So that's where Kayla comes in. She'll have to sell the residents that parking over somewhere else would be better. And, and convince them that this would be a better, there, there could be a better use for that. Um, the other property that we have, uh, uh, in, or we have a, the commercial street corridor was also mentioned. I don't know, do we want to go to that now or are we going in an order? Doesn't matter, go ahead. Oh, okay. So we own, we own a property on Worcester Place, which translates into probably four parcels by now that we've picked up along the way, the last one being from the city when they had an auction a few years back. Um, so let me try and get the timeline straight in my head here. Uh, it was probably about an, a year ago, we heard from Tony Whitman of Whitman Properties. He was in receivership of the property on Hampshire Street, which is up against the fire station. So the corner of Hampshire Commercial, um, one corner is the fire station, the other corner is this one. Whitney. I believe was the receiver to it, as I understand. Um, he wanted to invest in it. And he also knew the fellow that bought the other side of Worcester Place. So we own the side with all the grass. I forget the number, I, w I should know that. But um, we own the side with all the grass down with a single building. 
and he owned and, and a fella from uh, I believe it's California invested in across the street. So we met with him. We also met with um, MRLR and we all walked. We did a nice walk of the neighborhood and really got a feeling of it. Um, we collectively reached out to the police. The police were outstanding in supporting our concerns. We also looked in the mirror, quite honestly, with each other and said, these aren't the best tenants for their activities aren't helpful. So um, the four ownership, the four groups, or four, four people really, we came together and I think we've made a big difference in that area. I'd encourage you to drive down the Worcester Place corridor now. It isn't what it was six months ago. It's much, much, much better than it was because as Mike was saying, four responsible landowners came together and we held each other accountable. Yeah. And they had some not so great things to say about our habits in cleaning up litter, frankly. Um, and we had some things to say about some of their tenants and we all took it to heart. We didn't have hurt feelings and we worked through our issues. So I, it's really all I have. I don't have a big planned statement or anything, but those are what I wanted to share on those thanks. properties. Okay, Steve, thanks a lot. Uh, any counselors have questions for any of the, uh, any of our guests at this point? Um, I, I have a question. Councilor Valentin. Um, is there, you know, there's, there's always a meeting for everything, right? Um, is there any type of like, I don't know, advisory group or something that kind of brings all of you together already um, where these conversations can kind of continue? Because, um, I mean, maybe that's the purpose of this order is just to kind of jumpstart that and then, you know, we're, we don't need to be micromanaging anything more than we already do. Um, I mean, you're more than welcome to come whenever you want, but um, just wondering if there's kind of already a universe or a circle that you you all are kind of part of that. Because I think it's it's an important, I mean, just the parking uh, example, I think, is, is a great... Um, you know, just scenario of how we don't always know what other people are doing, and um, sometimes that communication is kind of cut off, not on purpose. So, so if I can jump in with that, I think collectively we are part of so many organizations. Um, you know, in in some ways we are organizations of different natures. Uh, we're a community development corporation. We belong to a statewide agency. Uh, we meet with uh, Western Mass members of other CDCs. In fact, there'll be one taking place tomorrow. Some of my staff will be at. Uh, a public housing authority has its own sort of circle of places. And your CAP agency, which, you know, again, slightly different funding models, slightly different focal point of activities. Nueva is many things. And, um, you know, actually very local, very present at almost any organizational gatherings I've been at, mm -hmm. but focused on Ward 2 or focused on Churchill specifically, the closest thing I can bring up is a group that Wayfinders and the Sheriff's Department has brought together, which is called the Chestnut Street Alliance. And I know we always try to have representation at every one of their monthly meetings. The Housing Authority is very often present. Um, not sure with you guys, but I think it'd be present on some occasions. Um, and there, it's more of a grassroots neighborhood intention with a lot of organizations bringing them together. Um, and I think at that group, we've tried our best to identify solvable problems for folks in the immediate neighborhood, as I've observed it over the last year, but nothing that would actually cause a building to be built. I think that's above the pay grade of that kind of group. Um, also within Holyoke, the landlords do meet, uh, and, and Greg Virgilio has actually been a um, force in keeping these folks together over a long period of time. Again, that is much more of a property management focus than a production of housing kind of focus. Uh, but I will say all of that to also let you know, one of the real challenges we would have with that is I think we're all kind of meeting to death. It's uh, I, I so know that's why I said I know there's a meeting for everything. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, maybe it's I don't know, maybe it's something through the Office of Planning and Economic Development and you know, throwing them like your updates for the newsletter and everybody making sure they're 
looking at that newsletter and kind of staying up to date. I, I mean, I'm just trying to say, if the conversation is open, why not continue it? That's all. Thank you. Marcos. So, uh, so in my opinion, I think what you're seeing is the conversation is opening and the council and the public is being made aware of it. The, the institutional, the institutions that have been here for many years doing development like VOC, One Holyoke Housing Authority, we're pretty hyper aware of, of each organization's priorities that I'll include my office as well. What you're not seeing in the hyper-focused conversation around these particular properties in Churchill is the, the broader environment in which it fits. We have the biggest urban renewal plan in the entire state. It's over 700 acres, and within that, it's divided in 10 areas. And so not to say that this isn't important, but you, this committee particularly deals with a whole host of projects that are important because it's either a historically significant property, it's in a really high visibility corridor, it's a building that's falling down, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see these same institutions, VOC with 123 Pine, One Holyoke, whether it's with the Armory or with other properties in the flats, the, the housing authority with Lyman Terrace and, and, and the big South Holyoke uh, projects that, that they're getting uh, off the ground with the redevelopment authority and that that table actually does exist for South Holyoke and the housing authority just convened it um, uh, a week ago two weeks ago so what what you're seeing is that there there is a whole host of pro uh, projects that is they're all on some sort of queue and prioritize prioritization for subsidy dollars right Matt lead it off and he said at some point we're going to go for CPA funds right and so whether it merits it or not what what that what what that shows is that these projects don't make economic sense by their own, right? They don't self-sustain. And so um, there is, unfortunately, it creates a queuing mechanism for, for high priority projects. And so it, that's the context of all of it. I don't think the limiting factor here is we're not aware of what we're doing. It's we are aware um, and, they're, and they're bigger lifts. Um, Sometimes it's even other things, right? Like we talked about the first, uh, the first property on uh, on the presentation last time was a property on the corner of Maple and I think Sargent, and the limitation there was was zoning, right? So that's something that we can tackle in parallel. Um, but information, just I, I would just put it out there so that you're you are aware. We are very aware of all of our projects, and we constantly share information amongst each other. Thank you, Council Lee. Yeah, first of all, um, I just want to congratulate uh, Marcos. Marcos uh, got sworn in today for the Governor's uh, Economic Development Planning Council, and that's huge, and that's also huge for the City of Hoyoke, so I just want to uh, give you a shout-out on that. Uh, second of all, I want to uh, give uh, Councillor Murphy a shout-out uh, for filing this order. Um, I played in the Chamber of Commerce uh, golf tournament today. It was raining, it was awful, and I'm freezing. But I saw this on the agenda, so I wanted to come here because we have seven uh, fantastic minds in this room. Um, uh, having all these people in one room, I think, was a pretty cool idea. And uh, listening to all you guys speak and listening to your different missions. And, and you know, I've been around for a long time. And, I, like, for instance, uh, Michael was talking about Habitat, Habitat for Humanity. I didn't realize that uh, they... They, they look at you know, a single family, and you guys focus on duplexes. Uh, I didn't know that. So um, uh, there's a lot of good information, uh, a lot of great minds in this room today. So I just wanted to give a shout out and uh, um, say thank you guys for coming in. Thank Council you. Lee, thank you, as always. Um, Council Murphy. I can make one more comment, and I'll make a motion if that's OK. So I, I, I agree with all of what's been said, and I agree with, and I know there's big problems, and there's big issues, and I know there's a lot. but. Think of, think of the person that is in Churchill or in South Hoyoke or in, in the flat that's next to a boarded up building, a vacant lot that has been neglected for 15, 20 years. And then think we start making little steps. We, st we start taking a maple and a Jackson or we start taking a maple and a chestnut and they start to see things happening the community as a whole becomes involved in making things get better. And I understand you, you, try, you, know, you got a huge project talking about in, in South Hoyoke, and I understand that, and we can't be doing everything. But I think we need to try to find a way in all of the areas of this community to keep making progress that is noticeable and significant. Uh, for for those residents, because when that happens, 
The crime element eventually is going to be reduced. The enthusiasm for others to come in and invest, not necessarily agencies, but individuals uh, who may now start to see this is a place where I can invest and I'm going to make some money, but I'm going to provide a service, housing, business, whatever. So that's, that's a, one of my goals in this is that we start, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, 20 blocks in Churchill. It can be one or two sections, small sections to start with, and it doesn't have to be uh, done uh, by next year. But it, it, I, the, more, the quicker we can do something and, substanti and substantially make a change and make an investment, I, I can tell you people see it. People, they say they care about me. I mean, I, I can tell you when I go to South Hollywood, people tell me, you know, and, and that's one of, the, one of the things I'm very happy about with the revitalization is they don't, they don't really care about me. People, you know, they're not coming to take care of what my issues are. And I'm sure I get the same thing and I've talked to people in Churchill, you know, the crime is a major concern. So that's my goal. And I do, and I understand the comp complexity and the funding and all the other aspects, but if each time we can do something and, you know, if we have to invest some money to be able to make that change, and yes, we don't make that money back to start with, we make it back in the long run. Uh, and, that's, and that's my goal, but I will, and I encourage you all to, I know you don't want to have any more meetings, but I encourage you all to stay together. I encourage you to keep working when there's city properties that we know we have and we have opportunities that we reach out and say, these are city properties. Is there anything that you would like to do? These are agencies that I respect and I would encourage us to do that and I'll make a motion that the order has been complied with. Second. Second. Uh, hold on, what motion made and second have the order complied with the discussion, Council Lee. I just got a text from Eileen, uh, so I want to clarify. The Chamber of Commerce Golf Tournament was fantastic. The weather was horrible. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Jordan did a fantastic job. The weather was awful. Thank you. Oh, we'll take a motion to strike Mr. Leahy's prior. No, okay. Um, okay, so fortunately it's not the congressional record, but uh, you know, we, 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 de we, we definitely want to clarify that. We want to make sure everybody's. Uh, praised and loved and hugged. Um, okay, so that being said, uh, any other discussions? See a uh, council, I'm sorry, Council Sullivan. Yeah, I'd like to get one word in, Seth. No, you can, yeah. you can have, you can have uh, two. Yeah, um, to Mr. Moriarty's earlier point about trying to focus uh, uh, with budget constraints on just one court or the other, um, I'd, I'd like to suggest, uh, especially now as we get into another fiscal planning season, the monies are there. I think as a city, we have to do a, a better job of prioritizing that and um, really looking at some of the feel-good projects we do and putting those aside and uh, really focusing in on these areas and these problems, particularly crime. And a couple of quick examples, you know, we've got great resources here for leveraging money, both through CDBG and through CPA now. and. We, Take a look at what we did. $100,000 was cut from demolition, $20,000 from community policing, and sent to what I'll term as uh, feel-good projects. And that's nice stuff to have, but we really, to your point, need to focus on these issues and prioritize these issues if we're gonna make real progress and real headway. And as we, as we get into our budget planning for uh, fiscal 20, let's, let's see if we can do more of that and push that agenda as a city. Council Sullivan, thank you. Council Sullivan is very referring to, we received the communication from uh, the CDBG uh, department head on Friday, I think, um, with, the, with the final spreadsheet allocation. Uh, Mr. Mainville is very familiar with that and Mr. Moriarty is very familiar with that. So you might be familiar with that too. Um, so that, that allocation will be received in City Council next uh, Tuesday, a week from tomorrow when we, when we meet. So you'll, you can, I don't, does he, do they put that on, um, on their website, Mike? Uh, it should, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Could, would, you, would you mind contacting Ms. Zeller tomorrow to just inquire? Yep. Okay, so if, if you would. So yeah, it's all public record, but that is, I think as, as we all know here that, that uh, there's a whole game with CDBG, right? We 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 we, we go, go through all the rigmarole, but really boils down to, um, you know, what the mayor decides. I, I think we all know that, right? Do we, do we all know that? 
that, that's how it works? Okay, well, okay, now you know. All right, so it's a huge, huge game. Huge game. We get all these orders coming in and this whole thing, and Councilor Sullivan and, and, and Councilor Valentin are instrumental in meeting with uh, the um, What's the group, Mike? CDBT? No. The, 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 advisory the advisory CAC. CAC. The CAC. And then we have public hearings, and then we have meetings here. I can't believe you don't know this, but, uh, but I'm not surprised. Uh, then we have hearings in here, then we have hearings in the city council, and we used to have these long meetings. When I first got on the board, I mean, like probably four or five hours, maybe battling over 3,500 here or, or, or 2,000 here. And, and it all comes down to whatever the executive of the city, you know, can strike the whole thing out and put him wherever he or she wants. So it's an entire game, huge game. But you're advocates and you know how to play that game. Now that you understand how it's played, you can advocate for, for yourself by contacting the mayor. But that's what Councilor Sullivan is referring to. Okay, so that's discussion on the motion that uh, the order has been complied with. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. Don't be strangers. You're uh, more, always yeah, welcome one here. One more to go. The parking lot. We're going to talk about You're nine, item seven. Two. Uh, well, hold. Uh, oh, uh, Councilor. Okay, Council, we're, we're just going to dispose of, we're going to go out of order and take up six first, and so we're good. But th thank you, thank you for coming, okay? Thanks. Thank you for being here. If I could get a motion, take number six off the table, please. Just go out of suspend so and take a six. So moved. Thank you, Michael. A motion being seconded to uh, take agenda item number six off the table and discussion hearing none. The motion, uh, the motion is hereby ordered. Uh, we are before us. Um, ordered. Um, that in order to allow for development and redevelopment of properties in the area in alignment with existing city plans, provide cohesiveness to the area and bring those parcels into, into conformity, the following parcels be zone changed as shown in the following table. And here's a table with all sorts of parcels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or so parcels on here. Uh, um, uh, I'm not really sure how I, uh, this, this, came up at the last meeting. I had to leave that meeting early. I wasn't feeling well. Um, and this this motion was uh, under Father on Motions, Orders, and Resolutions. I, it does not belong in this committee. It's, it's a zone change. So I, I'm just going to, I'm going to make the motion um, that it be referred to the Ordinance Committee. I'll second that. Okay. Under discussion on that, hearing none, um, the motion is made and seconded to refer this uh, Agenda item six from the DGR committee to ordinance. So we understand what we're voting on? On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that is now that is now gone to ordinance. Okay. Um, again, under suspension, I, I want to I, I want to be sensitive to everybody's time. If I get a motion, take number seven off the table, please. So motion made and second, take uh, agenda item seven off the table. Uh, uh, the motion reads uh, that the mayor, uh, director of OPED, and director of HHA meet with the committee to seek ways to include the parking lot at the corner of Clemente and Hamilton Streets as part of the planned South Holyoke housing redevelopment around Carlos Vega Park. So, uh, Kayla, you're here for this? Okay, Kayla, welcome again. Mr. Mainville. Sarah, uh, welcome again. Uh, Ms. Morero, do you want to tell us what's happening with this? Or, 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 do you, or Councilor Murphy, do you want to tell us what's happening? How would you like to proceed? Yeah, I can give you a little update. Councilor Murphy. So, so there's a, uh, probably a two or three parcel parking lot that uh, the uh, Greek Orthodox Church purchased quite a while ago down on, on Clemente uh, to, to have parking. This was prior to the Skinner Community Center being torn down, uh, which is right next to their property. Uh, and, and that's the lot right there that, that they've got up there. Uh, that is also the corner uh, right opposite Carlos Vega Park where we're talking about starting a housing revitalization in South Holyoke. And I know there's been concerns that the, the church would like to uh, I guess transfer that property, but they would like to get the parking lot, which is right uh, on the corner next to Nueva Esperanza. Now, I've, I've talked to both the Cynthia at Nueva, and I've talked to the Father Tom, I think, from the church. There is a parcel on Race and Hamilton that is owned by another church, I think, right? And 
I keep going by to see if anybody's using it, and it doesn't appear that anybody really uses it. So I, my goal is, originally I was told, no way we can do that. Uh, they're not, they're not going to agree to this transfer, and they're not going to do this. But I talked to everybody I've talked to seems to be pretty agreeable to let's do it. And the only thing is we need to try to get that race street potential as a parking lot to provide some off street parking for Nueva and other businesses there. So that's that's my goal. I, I, I certainly think if we do not get uh, the parking lot on Clemente and uh, Hamilton and we leave that there, we are diminishing the quality of the revitalization. And that's my goal is to get people together to put to plan it and, and actually sit down and talk to everybody and make sure that everybody is in agreement and that we have a chance to, to, to buy that property. And, and I, like I said, we're, we're going to be getting properties pretty much for nothing. And that's a pretty big lot to, to have. So, Who's we? Who's buying it? Well, that's probably why they're there. But <laughs> well, so, yeah. Okay, Ms. Merrill. You want sure. To I'm, I'm, I'm happy to um, provide some additional framing to this. And um, I'm in complete agreement with, with Councilor Murphy. Um, so uh, just to f uh, further frame the issue, uh, this is considered area eight of the urban renewal plan. As I said earlier, there's 10 sub areas to the, to the urban renewal plan. Area eight is the area uh, around Carlos Vega Park. And at this point in time, the redevelopment authority has secured site control over um, three of the four corners of the park and, and land around it uh, through a combination of uh, either a transfers, approved transfers from the city that has foreclosed on property, uh, outright private uh, private market uh, acquisitions, um, or I think actually those are the only two. <laughs> those are the only two methods. Um, uh, actually, no, or or uh, swaps uh, swap of land with with other organizations. We had one swap. Uh, this is the only corner of the park that, that we do not control and the only corner of the park that's not in the urban renewal plan. So as far as a, as a private acquisition, the redevelopment authority doesn't have the outright authorization uh, to acquire it because if it's not in the plan, they can't, uh, they can't do it. So uh, several months back, I, I want to say at least a year ago, if not, if not uh, more, uh, we were engaged with conversations with the, with the Greek Orthodox, Orthodox Church and Nueva Esperanza under prior leadership um, and to, to take the temperature on having some sort of, uh, of plan uh, that could address that, that corner, corner ownership. Uh, at the time, and just to, just to clarify, because you, you, know, you did get that information from me, so I just want to clarify. It's not that it was impossible. Um, at least that's not how we perceived it as impossible. But there seemed to be enough hesitancy um, that we decided strategically at the time to put it on the shelf um, while we worked on other factors in the plan in South Holyoke, identifying a master developer that at this point the redevelopment authority has selected the housing authority, uh, furthering community engagement with Nueva Esperanza around the project and the South Holyoke Neighborhood Association. As I said, in the, in the early order, uh, the Housing Authority, as lead developer for the project, has convened a series of, of stakeholders that work in South Holyoke, including the Greek Orthodox Church, Nueva Esperanza, Providence Ministries, uh, 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 South, Holyoke Safe Neighborhood, uh, um, South Holyoke Safe Neighborhood Initiative, uh, and others, uh, to work around the grand vision about this project. Uh, so to the immediate question and the direct question in the order of like how this can be done, the mechanism is quite straightforward. Uh, the, the city under procurement law would, would be very hard or nearly impossible for the city itself to arrange a swap as an arm's length transaction and with all the restrictions that, that real estate procurement law puts on the city. But the redevelopment authority would be rather easy to do swaps. So the mechanism for that is just an amendment to the urban renewal plan. Um, and so that's what had been put on the shelf, but it seems to me, and, and, and privately, Councillor Murphy and, and myself have had this conversation, it's, it seems that there is a lot more alignment and agreement in pursuing that. And so I'm, I'm very appreciative to the chair for putting this, uh, you know, expediting this being put on the agenda today, because if there seems to be agreement on that, I think it's safe to say that the, the HRA board would be more than happy to pursue this as an amendment and go through the motions of presenting this to the council formally 
so that the HRA has the has the authority to pursue uh, some sort of creative so, solution. Marcus, so what, what do you need from this committee then to, to move that along? Um, at this point, nothing formal other than if, if there if there seems to be consensus around this idea, because, you know, and, and it's a preface, the idea would 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 be working with the city owned parking lot that's at the corner of Hamilton and Maine. Right. There was hesitancy uh, at the time by Nueva Esperanza, again, under different leadership uh, of the city giving up the corner of the, the corner parking lot at Hamilton and Maine. Uh, and having that be as, as part as some part of swap, so we don't we don't have to commit to anything now or to any terms. But if, if something was a non-starter at that point, you know we we have enough problems. We can we can solve other problems while, while others. So uh, so uh, oh, 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 hold on, Councilor Alden. I'll, I'll recognize you in a second. So oh, oh, parcel sixteen on the map. parcel sixteen is a city owned. It's a city owned parking lot. Correct. That what was there? What was there? I mean, I thought, I that thought that used to be. Uh, I think Councilor Murphy just Skinner, referenced Skinner it. Community the, the Skinner again, Skinner Terry? Community Center. Okay. Skinner House. Yeah. It was a it was a tea house as well at some point. It was a speakeasy. It was, it was Skinner Coffee House. Right. Right. Back um, in the day. <laughs> was, you said it was a speakeasy too. I, I'm not sure. That'd be my, cool. my 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 limited next door. Cool. My, my yeah. limited yeah. understanding yeah. of yeah. it. Another one of those uh, secret underground tunnels. I don't know. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that what we got? Another one of those r r running around town here? My, call my, Jimmy Laval, ask him about that. Um, my limited historical knowledge is that it was a, a significant building, not just architecturally, but uh, yeah. Yeah. the function nice. that it served in the community as a, as a uh, for congregation. Uh, and it, you know, it's a common story in in, in South Holyoke. It, it got into significant disrepair, and at some point, it was demolished. From that, it became a municipal parking lot. Um, so the the idea that has percolated, which uh, Councilor Murphy, myself, and many others around around here, frankly, share, is that the the uh, the parking arrangement, as as far as Lot One, which the Greek Orthodox Church owns, is probably better to optimize that not as parking but as housing as part of the South Holyoke um, housing project. And if there is going to be parking for the church for no monetary consideration or lesser monetary consideration, that it would it would be most optimal for the for the church to have uh, an ownership interest in in lot 16. Again, not not all terms defined, but uh, the mechanism which goes to the question in the order: How could we do this? It would be much easier to to define that through an urban renewal plan amendment. Now, is that something that the HRA is? It's before that board now, or it it's it's not before. We literally had a meeting where he said, "Let's table this for the time being because we're burning a lot of effort into it, and there seems to be a lot of hesitancy and resistance. Let's continue on with other portions of the South Holyoke project. If there seems to be consensus, and I'm kind of getting the read that there is, at least I'm not hearing a lot of a, a lot of uh, the same opposition that, that I was hearing privately before. We're happy to bring this up at another HRA meeting at the next one and start." Moving on those logistics. Okay, Council Alvin. <clears throat> I was just trying to confirm 16. I'm all set. Council Murphy. So again, again uh, and you know, I've I've spoken with uh, Cynthia Nueva. I've spoken with uh, Father Tom. But the the key to all of this is the parcel on Race and Hamilton, which is next to uh, Lazat Glass, I think. Uh, and and that would be we don't own that, and that would be something that. That would need to be uh, offset, and that would create parking for Nueva right behind their facility and, and, and the other businesses that I'm hoping will develop on Main Street in the near future. So there would be parking for them as well. Uh, that's kind of like the missing piece. Uh, when I started speaking with people, it was like, well, we can't do that because then where are we going to park? And, and so it, we need to come up with the third piece. and, and driving around the neighborhood I, I kept and i finally said to marcos who owns this piece and 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 what did they use it for and nobody seems to they know who owns it but they don't seem to have anybody using it so if we were to do that it looks like that could pretty much replace the the parking lot at skinner's uh it would give a wave of parking it would allow the church to have parking where the skinner's was and then give the city or the housing authority um a chance for another two or three or four units of housing uh, in that in that lot. That used to be, if I'm not mistaken, two apartment buildings. Uh, yeah. 
in a convenience store. <laughs> Council Sullivan? Does that have a number, um, a lot number on the map there, or is that off? Uh, it's not on that uh, map. We, would have, number to, we would have to go. It would be going up. Which one are you referencing? The, uh, the the one next to Lazat, I think you referenced. Oh, yeah, we would be we would. Sir, go is that is that in relation to sixteen? Where is it? Is it diagonal? On the, it's on the next block. Next block yeah, right. Right. it's in the yeah. purple. It's right behind oh. right behind Nueva. Okay, so it's so, oh, okay. Well, we know we all know where Nueva is. So it's directly behind Nueva's yep. building. Oh, I see. And that's why everybody is kind of in agreement because we're we're trading mm -hmm. one parcel. And replacing it with a similar parcel, but we're getting the city's going to be, or the housing authority uh, is going to be getting uh, this parcel for for basically for nothing. And Matt, where Matt, Mr. Mayville, where or Sarah, one of you, where where's where's your Holyoke Housing Authority there? I'm I'm missing it. Well, currently speaking, we own properties at uh, 003 and 004, but uh, I think what the council is referring to is our overarching effort with the redevelopment authority to move forward. I think that the Redevelopment Authority actually has control of 005, 006, mm -hmm. uh, and a number of parcels around the Carlos Vega Park. I think I, I agree with Councillor uh, Murphy in that this is really kind of a cornerstone property. If we could, in fact, obtain that some way through, I don't know the mechanisms that are being referred to this evening, mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of do understand the importance of that particular parcel as it relates to an overall successful uh, South Holyoke under. Okay, and I didn't hear who owns 002 on That's Clemente. Pri privately owned. That's a, a multi story uh, <laughs> lock up structure. Currently and fully, it's fully occupied. Shape. Fully occupied and it's yep. in good shape. It's in good shape. Good actually. shape, a good yeah. owner and. Correct. Oh, isn't that good? <laughs> no, it's good news. I mean, I didn't know. No, I'm just not being facetious. No, I'm just, I'm it's just a good stakeholder to, to build around, to be quite honest with you. And I think, you know, the earlier conversation about Churchill follows true here in South Holyoke. Mm -hmm. There's a you know, sawtooth of a number of uh, vacant parcels that unfortunately give this neighborhood a, a tough reputation. Um, so if we could in fact, you know, replace this vacant uh, parking lot with filled occupied units, I think it would be very successful. Okay. Uh, all right, well, I think we had a pretty frank discussion there. How would you like to proceed? Do you want to table this from committee or uh, until we hear from the HRA or what? what's your What's your pleasure? If you don't mind, I think I would like to have it tabled and then just get a report back maybe in four to six weeks as to where we're gonna go. Obviously, and I want to make sure Noiva knows that we're trying to work on, and we gotta find out about the other parcel, obviously. Sure, I mean, my, my and if I may, I mean, my, my intent would then be present this new information to the HRA board, right? Get them up to speed. Mm -hmm. And uh, as assuming that they're still as enthusiastic about this idea as they were before or ran into resistance, then we would um, start the process of an urban rule plan amendment. Um, so that would that would require some work by staff to do that. And then there's a statute, to, there's a statute that governs how that's done. Um, for very small parcels, it's much easier. I, I suspect that for that size of a parcel, we will have to go through the, it would be very similar to when we passed the urban plan the first time. So it would require a public hearing by the, by the uh, redevelopment authority, um, generating the documents similar to how we've generated them for all the parcels in the urban plan. Once that, that public hearing happens, you know, reacting to any feedback, if there is any, if there isn't anything significant, then presenting it to the mayor and the city council. Uh, I don't Sorry, particularly remember if it's a public hearing at the city council, but then we would come here again. So it, you know, it would take a couple of months, but um, this is kind of the consensus that I'm really happy to hear, and which is why, as soon as I got the order, I asked the chair, can we just put it on the agenda and see, huh. can we take the temperature in the room? <laughs> Again, see, how, I, see how easy? Just ask him. <laughs> see, see how easy it is? Just, just, and I, and I Do it. you know, I, it's going to be, we're, we're not going to be developing in the next three or four months. So I think if we can get all this Do process it. done and we can get the properties transferred and, and everybody knows, and I just want to make two other statements. One, the, when the Greek Orthodox Church had a fire, uh, I'm going to say in the early 80s, maybe in the late 70s, and they were talking about leaving South Holyoke and it was Father Harry at the time, and I remember pleading with him, you're, you're, you're an anchor on Main Street for us. We, we, we need not to have another vacant lot. And then he 
he and then the parishioners said they would boil them stay. And then early in the 80s, the Nueva came around and they started to do renovation in South Hoyoke, which again helped. So there's two organizations that in the late 70s, early 80s, at least kept the heart of South Hoyoke beating. And, and now they can work together to have the transplant. Well, Terry, you want, if you want to ask Father Tom here for the next meeting, then I think that'd be really great. Um, okay, motion is made and seconded to table. Uh, Thank you. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion is tabled until we really hear back from uh, from HRA. Okay, thank you to everybody for, for you. coming tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Motion is made and seconded to uh, take up item number five off the table for discussion. All right. Motion made and second. Take number five off the table for discussion. On uh, the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, neighbor, neighbor, MOU between HGE and Columbia Gas or salvage new pipeline structure. Council Valentin. Thank you so much. Uh, so I've been in contact uh, with neighbor to neighbor and uh, shared the information with them regarding. Um, the petition and the public hearing and the, the information that we received uh, from the legal department regarding what that process would look like. And um, at this time, they are asking for a leave to withdraw, just like we did with the resolution. Um, they have been pursuing other avenues to have these discussions and have been productive um, with that route. So at this time, uh, leave to withdraw is what we are requesting. Okay, Second motion that. made and seconded to give this agenda item lead to a draw. On discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the next meeting is the 23rd. 23rd. Oh, did I? You want to be recognized? We're done. Oh, I'm sorry. Just okay. This. Okay, Mo the, the uh, next meeting is the 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, we will also have a meeting on June 3rd at 6 p.m. Uh, both of those are public hearings. I can't remember which is which, but one is for the old Midas and Kmart, and one is for uh, drive through at Lynch School. Uh, we, we may add a couple other things on there as well, but they, they should be pretty pretty tidy meetings. Okay, uh, one more motion, I'll do it. Motion to adjourn. A motion has been made and second to adjourn. All in favor, aye. We are adjourned, thank you. 23rd.